Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12, if you dare, would just shout, I got it. It says, the prudent see danger and take refuge. But the simple, can somebody say, you so simple? <laughs> but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Then 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 7, this is David speaking. He says, in my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. Can somebody say, that's my God. I called out to my God from his temple. He heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Our, our clause of concern and the segments in our foundational text that I would like to highlight and preach until I'm sweaty and come for your throat, your big toe, and your esophagus on tonight is the first part, our first found foundational text where we see in verse 12 of Proverbs chapter 27, the text says, the prudent see. Can I get everybody to say prudent? The prudent see. If you don't know what prudent means, it means the wise. The wise see. And in this biblical context, the word wise and the word see in Hebrew means to comprehend, to sense, and to notice. So let's put this together. Wise people can comprehend and sense and notice that this route is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, wise people can comprehend that things don't end up well for people who go this route. I'm not judging, I just see, I just have noticed when people go that way, pain is imminent. All of us are going to experience pain, but there is some pain you can't avoid. Y'all not talking to me. There, there is some pain that you can avoid. And I've just noticed people who go down this route, they're going to experience pain that they could avoid. I, I've just noticed and I comprehend people who go this route, heartbreak is imminent. Disappointment is imminent. Distractions are imminent. Those who will settle for less than God's best. Those who will settle, I've just noticed, I'm not judging, I just comprehend. I've just noticed that those who go that route end up settling for less than God's best. Because when all you have ever known is a desert, a cup of water looks like an ocean. I'm trying so hard to stay calm. When all you have ever known is dryness, even a cup of water looks like an ocean. But the prudent, wise people, they could comprehend, sense, and even notice that that route is dangerous. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take refuge. Psalms chapter 46, listen, Psalms chapter 46 verse 1 says, the Lord is my refuge. I'm trying so hard to teach this thing, but I feel like I'm going to preach. Calm down. Don't worship me, girl. I'm trying to calm down. He says, the Lord is my refuge. What does that mean? The Lord is my shelter. The Lord is my protector. Y'all excuse me for a second, but you can't find this type of protection from a security system. It's not found there. This type of protection you can't find in your security dogs guarding your estate. You can't find it. This type of protection cannot be found in a bodyguard. This type of protection cannot be found in a 45, your nine millimeter, or your pistol grip pump on your lap at all times. It can't be found there. This, this type of protection and this type of safety only can be found in the will of God. And listen, I can't speak for anybody else in the sacred sanctuary or watching online, but I've arrived to this place, just me, preaching high pitch, just me. I've arrived to this place where I want to live my life in the will. Thank you for the golf claps. Those are like, that's cool. I kind of want my will though. That's cool. But I have made up my mind. If this is you, can I say, I've made my mind up. 
I've made my mind that I want to live in the will. I want my marriage in the will. I want my ministry in the will. I want my preaching in the will. I want my sermons in the will. I want my church in the will. I want my family in the will. I want my decisions in the will. I want my decision making in the will because watch this, anytime you go outside of the will of God to get something, baby, you're going to have to stay outside to keep what you got. It's coming. I'm just an introduction. It's coming. I, I want to stay in the will of God. The prudent or wise people can comprehend and you notice that that route is dangerous. So I take refuge in the Lord. That's the first part. Can somebody say the first part? The second thing I want you to see from our foundational text in verse 7 of 2 Samuel chapter 22, is David says, in my distress, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he heard my cry. You know what distress means? It's in my uneasiness, in my turbulent of soul, in my unsettling, in my spirit, I call out. To God. So I want to show you how these two texts are married. The prudent can comprehend there's an unsettling. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. The wise person can notice something isn't right in my gut. I really, I really can't put my finger on it because you do know we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And indwelling means bowels. There's something about that gut feeling. It's something I just feel on the inside. I can't put my finger on it. I really can't articulate it. But in my distress, in my uneasy, in my uncertain, in the unsettling in my soul, I seek refuge in the Lord. But simple people feel that uneasiness and keep going. Did y'all see that? This is why when you read your Bible, don't just read it. Read it and squeeze it. <laughs> Somebody caught that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just read it. Read it and squeeze it. There's so much, so much to get here. When you are prudent, you have an uneasiness about roads that God has not pointed out for you. And you take refuge and you say, God, what is this? But when you simple, you just keep on going. Y'all ready for this? I think... What we need to talk about on tonight is can you discern the cautioning of the Holy Spirit? That's not the burritos you ate last night. <laughs> that, that's, that's not that show that you've been binging on Netflix that is bleeding over in your unconscious self while you sleep and you hit your realm because they're phases of sleep. It's not something that you just watched on TV. The Holy Spirit is trying to get your attention. We talked about in this series how to discern a miracle. We talked about that. We talked about how we need discernment in the area of who we label as a friend. Because when we put wrong labels on wrong packages, we by default ship them to wrong areas in our heart. And so when I have discernment, I'm like, this, this is not a friend. I placed them in the wrong compartment of my heart. They need to be relocated to an assignment. Because assignments aren't loyal to people. They're loyal to opportunities. And this is why I hurt so much because we mislabeled them. You were expecting you from people, but really this isn't somebody that you're looking to build a bond with. You're just looking where we placing bricks. That's it. That's it. We don't date assignments. We don't sleep with assignments. And I need discernment in that area. We, we talked about that. We talked about how gratitude heightens discernment. And, and whenever... The way that we have constantly been deceived and the way that we keep falling and entertaining a bulk of counterfeits. I said bulk. <laughs> when Jesus gave a parable, he didn't say, hey, the enemy sold weed. He said the enemy, plural, sold weeds. Counterfeits come in bulk. 
Can I get an amen? Y'all ever notice that? Distractions come in bulk. Deception, it, oh, it happens in bulk. Deceit, it happens in bulk. And this logos, the word of God that we are seeing on tonight is telling us, hey, there's an uneasiness that I'm going to give you. There's an unsettling I'm going to give you. And maybe you have not been discipled. Maybe you haven't learned from the scriptures that that is just not a funny feeling, but that tension on the inside is the Holy Spirit telling you something ain't right. Something ain't right. But those who feel that and keep going, they pay the penalty. I'm just trying to give you Bible. I understand that we learn that gratitude helps us to where we don't view things as just offers. See, when you have an ungrateful heart, you become desperate. <laughs> Everything an option. <laughs> Everything's a maybe. Because when, when, when you're not grateful for what God is doing in this season, when you're not grateful for what God has given you right now, I know you want more, but when you're not grateful, you'll end up feeling limited and you'll end up feeling like you're in a prison. So every offer is now a bail bond. That opportunity, oh, that's a bail bond. That person who's taking interest in you, oh, that's a bail bond. Offering more money, oh, that's a bail bond. Oh, oh, oh this person is talking good, that's a bail bond. But when you're grateful, you don't view it as a bail bond. You view it as a prayer project. <laughs> This is so good. I'm not getting too excited because I don't know if this is a counterfeit or a godsend. I'm not trying to be bailed out from anything because I'm grateful for what I have. With godliness, with contentment is great gain. So we learn that, that when we're not grateful, sometimes we could end up picking things prematurely because I just want to get out of this season and we talked about on Sunday if y'all didn't watch Sunday's message online I highly recommend that you go check it out because my wife and I talked about God is this you and anybody who ever asked the question God is this you what you're really saying is God I need some confirmation I've done me I've had me formations too long <laughs> anybody had those me formations you thought it was God but at the time I realized no that was a me formation <laughs> yeah, when you're asking God for confirmation, confirmation in Hebrew means authorization. So what you're really saying is, God, please show me the areas where I have been authorized. I want to be in rooms that I have been authorized in, not rooms that I've barged open the door. God, show me where I'm authorized. Yeah, he cute, she cute, but I have been authorized to be in covenant with them. I don't want a me formation. I want a God formation. But the simple feel this uneasiness, and they keep on going. You felt the uneasiness. You still went to their apartment. <laughs> Y'all not going to like me for like the next 45 seconds. <laughs> I'm going like, to talk like I'm at an auction where I can hurry and get over with because it's going to get kind of hot for a few seconds. All right. <laughs> you felt the uneasiness, but you still doing business with them. You felt the uneasiness, but you still gave them the house key. Y'all not talking to me. You felt the uneasiness, but you still slept with them. You felt the uneasiness, but you still went back to that church. You felt the uneasiness, but you continue to monitor and continue to respond to the text and continue to respond to the DM. You felt the tension. And the Bible is saying when you do that, you're simple. simple because the prudent they feel that uneasiness and they take refuge but when we're simple watch this sometimes simple means untaught when we're untaught how to discern what's gas from what's the holy spirit when we're untaught watch this what's my anxiety versus the holy spirit saying no this isn't me when we, can't discern, when we can't discern our anxiety from the voice of God, we make simple choices. Simple choices. And I begin to let us know, like, look, this, this isn't due to an assumption. There's a difference between an assumption and an unction. Assumption is a creative mental forecast. 
that we conjured up that excludes the facts or heaven's endorsement. That's an assumption. Assumption is when you skip the whole movie, but you go straight to the closing credits. An assumption is when you have adopted a lie and you made it your truth. But an unction from the Holy Spirit, unction means anointing, and anointing means chosen. So when you have an unction from God, it's when the Holy Spirit is revealing to you, this is what I have chosen for you. And like my wife articulated, I don't want to live my life in assumptions. I want to live my life in unctions. I don't want to live my life in what I think, but I want to live my life choosing what God has chose for me. And so my wife shared years ago, she went to this restaurant and she ordered this food. She had like collard greens and smothered chicken and mac and cheese, and she just killing it. She just killing it going in, you know, like you went to Turkey Leg Hut or something. You just killing it and going in. And as she's killing it, she notices this big black bug in her collard greens. <laughs> so y'all did the same thing people did when she was on tour and she shared the story. And she said immediately she felt like she was about to throw up. She threw the food away. But she didn't go tell the people. I'm like, these are your friends who are running a restaurant. I would have went back and said, look, y'all nasty. Y'all got some bug. Y'all need to check all y'all collard greens. Jerry's that dude. Listen, don't serve no more greens. <laughs> she was like, I just threw it away. And I had these knots in my stomach. And I think a lot of times, correlation is, there's some things that's bugging your spirit, but you keep eating. How long... Are you going to allow this to bug your purity before you make an exit? I'm talking to somebody. How long are you going to justify, well, maybe he, well, maybe she, well, maybe they, well, maybe it. How long will you justify it until you acknowledge something is bugging you? It's bugging you in prayer. It's bugging you throughout your day. It's bugging your attitude, your posture, and your mindset. How long are you going to continue to just eat around what's bugging you? And I felt as though the Holy Spirit says, listen, my people need to be able to discern when I'm giving you a cautioning. Because the thing about the cautioning of the Holy Spirit is it doesn't go away. I'll be real because some of us probably won't be real. Have you ever tried to ignore God? But it just keep on staying there. It ain't like God, like, all right, you know, I'm going to quit talking. It just keeps staying there. Keep staying there. Just keep staying there. I don't know where we get this, this still, small voice from the Holy Spirit. It's not really a still, small voice. I don't know about y'all, Holy Ghost. But when I'm about to say something, I hear, Jerry, don't you say nothing. Be quiet. Be quiet. You need to stop talking. It just so happens when I ignore it, it's not that he stopped talking. It's just that my flesh is getting so loud and the spirit is still talking at the same volume. But my flesh is so loud that my flesh is starting to overpower the voice of the Holy Spirit. So all I'm hearing now is you better clap back. You better tell them a piece of your mind. You better set it straight. It's not necessarily a still small voice that's talking to some of us. Cautionings, God is projecting his voice. No. This isn't me, because if you try to go against that voice, you call it insomnia, but it's really a cautioning. That's not a still, small voice. That's something saying, how long are you going to try to sleep with this on your heart? How long are you going to try to sleep with this in your wallet, sir? How long are you going to try to keep on ignoring me? You cannot continue to ignore me and say that you love me. And I'm talking to somebody on tonight because there is a cautioning that the Holy Spirit... Is trying to give us, and I'm not God. I'm just his son. But I don't know what happens if you go down that road. Everybody's outcome is, a, is not the same. Some people get it right and they repent. Some people turn around and they have to deal with the residue of a counterfeit. Some people die. I don't know what's on that road for you. All I know is when you get that cautioning, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. So God, would you help us on tonight be able to listen to your voice because you showed us in your word wise people have an uneasiness about a route and they take refuge God but when we lack wisdom we continue to go down a route and we'll pay for it help us to live life 
where some pain and some storms we don't have to get wet from. If I got to go through storms anyway because I'm called, don't let me go through storms unnecessary, God. Give me wisdom. Give us discernment. In Jesus' name, and everybody who agrees with that prayer would just shout in the room, amen. amen. Are y'all ready for this? This one has a different tone on the night. This one has a different tone because I'm like, look, um, we need to be able to understand when you just go, allow, go down the road of that uneasiness feeling in your spirit, it causes your judgment to get clouded. And when your judgment is clouded, sometimes you end up confusing God's red flags as butterflies. <laughs> it's like God tries to give us warnings and give us cautions. But the way some of our choices look, it's like red is my favorite color. <laughs> so when God shows us a red flag, oh, he read what it do, baby. <laughs> what it do, what it do. She read what it do, baby. Like God is not playing. <laughs> I want to speak around this thought from this subject for part eight of our discernment series on tonight. Something ain't right. Something. Can I get y'all to help me? Y'all don't have the right to remain silent. Can y'all help me? Somebody say something ain't right. I didn't really like it. Let's make it kind of ghetto. Can, can we make a hood? Don't say something, say something. Like have a U in it. Can I get y'all to say something ain't right? Put in the room, don't spell it accurately. We're not using proper grammar. We're not saying something is not right. We're saying something ain't right. <laughs> something ain't right. I don't know, has anybody ever felt that before? Something is not right. There's a uneasiness. There's a tension. There's something bothering you. There's something that constantly keeps plaguing your mind. You have this reservation. You have this like, uh, I don't know if I should go with them to the club tonight. I don't really want to go to the club with them tonight. I normally do, but someone inside of me is saying I shouldn't go. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know if I should respond to that DM. I know this is what I think I want, but uh, something on the inside ain't right. I know that they're telling me, come on, let's go to happy hour. But last time I went to happy hour, I got so faded. I got so tipsy. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I should go there. Why y'all looking at me like that? I, I, I don't know. There's this reservation on the inside. And my desire, my desire and what I feel God has anointed me on tonight to do is I want us to learn how to listen to that uneasiness at the door not after the bedroom festivities. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I want us to be able to be out of service because all of us, our life is like an elevator. God has pre-programmed for you to go to the top. And some people are going to step on the elevator of your life and push your buttons. But I want you to have so much character and so much self-control that I don't have to go to the floor that they just demanded. So I need us to learn how to be out of service to certain people and certain places before, not after you have provided them with your services. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Yeah, be out of service at the door. Not after you have provided them with your services. I want us to learn, and my assignment on tonight is to get us to learn how before you pick up the pen and sign it, take heed to that cautioning before you signed it. Before, not after, when you're down to your savings. And you still have six months left to pay in the leasing agreement. I want us to learn before. Somebody say before. I want us to have enough discernment so that we feel the uneasiness that is the Holy Spirit saying, you're working too much. You're working too much, too hard. There is no application of the Sabbath principle in your life. All you do is work, 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 work. All you do is work. And you say, I'm a grinder, but really it's you scared. You're scared of experiencing what you experienced in childhood. You're scared of being broke. And so you work, work, work. That's all you do is just work. And I want you to notice that uneasiness that you're not spending time with your son. I want you to notice that before. 
The local police department calls you and tells you to come down to identify your son. I want you to identify that uneasiness before the local police department calls you and said, we picked up your son from skipping school. I want you to notice that mom, dad, before your daughter comes and tells you that she missed her cycle for two months. Notice it before. The Holy Spirit is talking. When do you listen? Before or after? So I, I want us to get to a place as soon as we feel it. As soon as we feel the Holy Spirit talking, we stop. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. I want us to get to a place where as soon as we feel the Holy Spirit talking, we stopped. I'm just convinced that I'm not the only one in the sacred sanctuary and watching online where I'm tired of finding out fruit is bad after I took a bite. Y'all can give me golf claps all you want. Anybody else say, listen, I want to know it's bad before I take a bite. Before I bit it and taste the worm, I want to know like in the Genesis that this is rotten. So can we say a confession? Are y'all ready? Can we say a confession? Everybody online, get your confession fingers ready. And everybody in the sanctuary, can you say this with me as loud as you can? Can you say, God, give me a heart to receive your cautioning at the light not just after the wreck. One more time. God, give me a heart to receive your cautioning at the light, not just after the wreck. Is anybody who wants that? My Lord, help me. See, I, I, need, I need help because we have to understand, I spoke about this all during the series. There's wheat and there's weeds. And some of us, we don't recognize is weeds until after we plucked it. And so now your heart has to deal with everything you've been plucking. And this is how a lot of your minds look, filled with weeds. This is how a lot of your emotions look, filled with weeds. And I'm not saying all the time you will have discernment to know before you pluck it. But at least get me to a place, God, that when I'm pulling it, you stop me. Did y'all hear me? I may not always know what's God, but as soon as I'm pulling it, as soon as I'm about to make the attempt, stop me. I don't want to live my life with dirt on my hands that I could have avoided because I know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 27 tells us the prudent. They see danger, and they take refuge. But the simple, they see danger, and they keep going. And the question I want to ask you on tonight is, what are you paying for because you kept going? What are you paying for because you're still going? Make it real, real. What are you about to pay for because of where you're about to go? Anybody else had like plan sin? Y'all holy? I'm going to just put me on front street. There were times in college when I would go out to the club and pray, God, don't let nothing happen to me. Anybody else done that? Like, God, don't let me get shot. I know I'm not supposed to get, don't let them put nothing. I ain't going to drink nothing, God. Just let me get back home the whole way around. You nervous. When they start getting a little too rowdy in the club, west side, look, you feet bush. You're like, okay, I got to go. I got to go. Hey, you going? I got to go. Because <laughs> I prayed that God helped me get through the night. I don't know if y'all done that, but I've done it. Like, God, I know I ain't supposed to go over here. Just don't let me get shot. <laughs> I put me on front street. Everybody else, y'all holding innocent, but that's what Jerry used to do. I used to have like pre-planned prayers just in case something go wrong. I used to think if I get shot, I'm going to hurt and say, God, forgive me for all my sin. Receive my soul and my spirit. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever thought like that? I feel so judged. Okay. <laughs> okay. So church family, as I was studying throughout this week, I had an epiphany. I had an epiphany. And God was revealing to me why I prompted you to do this discernment series. I said, Jerry, the reason I led you 
to do this series is because I'm trying to redeem my people's heart to have the ability to trust. Okay? So I'm still not understanding why is this trust thing still coming up. The series is to redeem trust. God, I'm not understanding that. Listen, I have an awesome and wonderful plan for your life and for their life. For real, I'm not just preaching this because it makes you feel good. We need to normalize hard sermons like this one who may not get in our likes. People may not share it. It may not get a whole lot of claps. It may not get a whole lot of amens. Oh, but it will help people be free. It will help people grow in their faith. Normalize that. I have an awesome plan for your life. I have a mind blowing. You can't even fathom my daughter, my son, what I want to do with your life. Your mind can't even grasp it. Like God is so big. If you try to grasp him in your finite mind, you'll start to doubt his existence. Because he's so massive, your mind, your neurological state can't even comprehend him. He's so vast. So I have a plan for your life. Because we learned last week that purpose is a fixer and purpose fixes problems. You have been cosmically created by God to fix a problem. That's why you have a birthday. So when you and I die, there's some problems that should no longer exist. But when my people have a resume of being deceived, when my people have a resume of being lied to, Taken, at, taken advantage of, cheated on, that evaporates trust from their heart. And the quality that my children have to have is to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. But due to all the people who hurt you, you don't just trust people, you don't trust me. They don't even trust me. And listen, I, that there's a people that I'm going to send them to. There's people, there's places, and there's spaces that I'm going to send them to that is necessary for their purpose. But since they don't do people, since they don't do pastors, since they don't do men, since they don't do women, since they don't do church, they don't trust anybody. And that trust, that distrust is coming back on me. So when I tell them this is my will, they don't trust it. When I give them uneasiness, they don't trust it. When I open doors, they don't trust it. When I close doors, they don't trust it. When I say yes, they don't trust it. When I say no, they don't trust it. When I send you kingdom friends, they don't trust them. When I send you kingdom leaders, they don't trust them. It is a trust issue. And the reason you have to do this discernment series is because I'm trying to redeem their trust. Pastors have broken trust. Spiritual leaders have broken trust. Parents have broken trust. And we're saying we have trust issues. And God is saying this, this whole series is about redeeming my people's ability to trust me. But if they don't know me, if they don't know my voice, they won't even be in a place to be able to trust what I'm speaking. Because God is speaking to somebody right now in the house and online but it's hard for you to receive it not because of anything I've done but because of something someone's done or what's a little deeper what you have done to yourself you're like I hear you Jane I don't have no trust issues with nobody I, got just, I just got trust issues with me like I'm my own enemy for real though <laughs> God said look I want you to understand that one of the most painful blows to hit the human heart, one of the most painful blows to hit the human heart is to be deceived. Hear me. To be tricked, played, taken advantage of, cheated on, whatever you want to call it. Deception is that gut punch that makes our soul has a hard time to catch his breath after you found that out. After you read the text messages, y'all not talking, I'm trying to be as real as I could be. After you saw the email, after you overheard the conversation, after you thought that this was God, and it wasn't, that distrust can callous our heart to love, 
and love is needed for the Christ follower. And now I get it. The afterbirth of deception is distrust. Did y'all hear what I just said? The afterbirth of deception is distrust. Now I'm having an epiphany moment as I'm studying. I'm like, I get it now. If deception is one of the most painful things that hit the human heart, no wonder Satan and hell traffics in deception. Because he knows that they have to be able to trust God. Y'all missing it? I'm in like having like mind blown moments. They have to trust God. So anytime the enemy sends something to deceive you, it's really not even about the trick. It's a war move on your trust. Are y'all getting this? It is, I want them to have a heart that can't trust. Because God said himself, without faith, it's impossible to please me. And without trust, it's impossible for you to have faith. So this, this whole discernment series is orbiting around your ability to trust again. To trust again. So now, when the Christ follower is trying to heal, you're trying to work through the traumas that you had in childhood. And some churches have made the erroneous attack of demonizing somebody because they don't know how to get over their trauma. And so we call it a devil. Why are you looking like that? It's not a devil and not a demon that has my personality like this. It's I've been deceived and I'm trying to find myself again. Don't demonize me. Te teach me how to trust. I'm, I'm working through trying to understand why daddy left. I know I'm supposed to be over it because I'm in my mid-30s, but I still wonder if I would have followed his instructions and if I would have did my chores, would he have stayed? I looked every day in the bleachers at the basketball game, hoping he would surprise me and be there, but he never showed up. I'm trying to figure out how to deal with that. I'm trying to figure out how in the world is my mother going to blame me for what her boyfriend did to me and tell me that he is trying to be a good man. You shouldn't have been walking around in your pajamas like that. You shouldn't have been wearing all of that. And I'm trying to figure out how is she going to take his side and not mine? Everybody's not promiscuous. In there. And every time we demonize people who are trying to still work through the trauma, we make them feel dirty for people who haven't even played in the mud. This is real. I know it's getting uncomfortable. I'm just being obedient. It's hard for me to figure out how, how do I manage these emotions? That was supposed to be for my husband, not your perversion. It happened to men too. That was supposed to be for my wife, not your perversion. Perversion touched me before puberty ever had me. And I'm trying to figure this out and I recognize it's a war move on your ability to trust and there's somebody struggling like look at all this mud I got on me all of this stuff I've done to myself it always wasn't them and I came here on tonight to debunk the lies of hell there is no valley there is no mountain there is no depth there is no door there is no sin there is no filth there is no shame that can stop the love of God from chasing after you Listen, I feel like this is going to break something off somebody on tonight. The blood is stronger than mud. The blood is stronger than mud. I don't see your shame. I don't see your sin. All I see is what Jesus did for you on the cross. No, it's not popular preaching, but it helps people get whole. I'm preaching like this not to be popular, but I want a word to penetrate your soul so that when my sister looks in the mirror, she'll stop calling herself ugly. Your beauty is deeper than Mac. Your beauty is deeper than Sephora. And it's the same thing for my brothers. Our masculinity is not in this and how many, we, many, many, many women we sleep with and how much we can stack our bread. You are the apex of God, sir. And I need my people to get back to a place where they trust me so now I'm like I get it I get the whole mixture thing 
because hell loves mixture. He doesn't like us in the dark. He don't really like us in the light. He loves for us to be in the gray. He's the producer of Fifty Shades of Gray. <laughs> Somebody caught it. He, he loves contrast because he knows mixture brings distrust. See if anybody's real enough. It's those potential, it's that potential that messes you up. Okay, y'all not talking to me. I'm going to make it go home. I'm push a little harder till you get it on the way home. It's that potential that he could be better that trapped you up. It's that potential that she could be better that trapped you up. It's the glimpses of potential that make us overlook the gray. And that uneasiness was heightened when you saw the gray. But my biological clock is... My biological clock is ticking. Or it doesn't take all that. And so he traffics in this mixture because bipolar leadership brings forth confusion. Is this too much? I'm trying to be real, y'all. So when our text tells us that a wise person sees danger and they take refuge, but a simple person, they keep going and suffer for it. In other words, it's saying when you're wise... When you see danger, you end it. Okay. You end it. You break up. You stop going to. You deactivate. You unfollow. Y'all get it. You block. And it's not always that. Sometimes the way you're talking to your spouse, you end that. You start treating him with respect. Start treating your leader with respect. So when you recognize something, the proof that you're being spirit-led is there's action. Why are, you, why are you procrastinating with the word that God gave you in 2018? All that's going to do is make the penalty be bigger. And you know, how, know what the penalty is? Most of us think if I do something wrong, God's going to come down and squash me. If I do something. The penalty is your mind. You're tw- a lot of us, when the Bible many times tells us we reap what we sow, everything has a different reaping. But the biggest reaping that everything comes with when we disobey God is your mind being tormented. When we step outside of the will of God, our mind is tormented. All right, y'all don't want to talk to me. So when you reside in the kingdom, you can identify royalty. That's a whole word in itself. Maybe the reason I can't spot kings is because I'm not living by kingdom principles. Maybe the reason I can't spot queens is because I'm not living by kingdom principles. Maybe the reason kingdom principles feels like an attack versus somebody trying to teach me and train me biblical doctrine is because I'm not living by kingdom principles. So watch this. It's the lack of kingdom principles in my life that's causing for me to be deceived by theirs. Did y'all hear what I just said? I can't wait till we go to our new series on Kingdom Vibe Only. It's going to be a whole turn up, up in here. We're going to have crowns and hoodies that say kingdom on and everything. Kingdom Vibes Only. So I get it now. When it's kingdom, it leads, establish order, and it regulates the chaos. That's when it's kingdom. It leads me into growth. It establishes order in my life, and it regulates the chaos. So how do you know if that uneasiness is from the Holy Spirit? It's when something in your life is not leading but causing you to follow something. It's not regulating the chaos, but it's spawning it. And it's not establishing order, it's producing disorder. Red flag, red flag, red flag. This is not something that the king sent. And the original kingdom design has placed a horn, a siren, and a warning system on the inside of us. It has. Man has adopted it. We have car alarms that let you know that somebody's possibly vandalizing your car. Are they too close? We have fire alarms that tell you you need to escape. We have carbon monoxide alarms that will tell you there's a silent killer in the house. And one of the scariest alarms for me, I don't know if y'all ever heard one, but it's a tornado alarm. Has anybody ever heard one of those? Listen, I'm in Houston. 
okay? I'm from Houston, Texas, born and raised on a playground. That's where I spend most of my days. <laughs> born in Houston, Texas. I'll never forget it. May 2011, I went to Oklahoma City. This is where I met Tanisha. And Jerry loves the weather. I, I just watch it still to this day. While everybody else <clears throat> was watching Rugrats, I'm watching Storm Stories. I love the weather. And so when I got there, I began to ask my cousin about the weather. Now, if you know anything about May, that's considered tornado season. And I'm in Oklahoma, so I'm asking, like, man, y'all got tornadoes? He said, yeah, they, they happen all the time. But sometimes, ever so often, they come to a populated area. So that night, I go to my hotel, I sleep, true story, and I'm awoken to this. I'm thinking I'm in a scene from Twister. We got to go, Joe, Bill, let's go, we got to go. I'm seriously tripping. Like, I'm just talking about this. This is confirmation, y'all. And so I called my cousin and said, yo, what's up, man? Is there like a strong storm cell? He said, no, man. He said, every Saturday they test the, the sirens. <laughs> and I said, you kidding me? He said, no, every Saturday, they're testing the sirens. I'm like, I could never live here. I'm, I couldn't live in any city. No, no, no jabs to anybody that's from Oklahoma, Kansas, wherever. I couldn't live when hearing an air raid and horn every Saturday. Y'all, that freaked me out. I hopped up for real. And here's the thing. When it comes to natural sirens, they may get tested. But every spiritual siren is never a test. Never. Whenever in your soul is, you. It's not God testing to see. Let me see if they know my voice now. Let me see if he has learned discernment. He's been binging the series. Let me see if she knows how to discern. She's grateful. Let me. Every siren, every siren that God gives is real. Can I get somebody to say it's real? I'm going to give you Bible. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. It says, does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice at the highest point along the way? Y'all look at this. Where the path meets, she takes her stand beside the gate leading into the city. So I'm like, God is giving you wisdom before you go in. Are y'all looking at this? I'm just reading the Bible. Beside the gate leading into the city. At the what? Entrance. So it's like before you go in, she what? Cries aloud. To you, O oh people, I call out, I raise my voice to all mankind, you who are simple. That seems like such an insult, right? Instead of calling somebody stupid, like, bro, you simple. <laughs> it's like, you who are simple gain prudence. We learn that, gain what? Wisdom. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen. For I have trustworthy, there it is, I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. My lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. Here it is. To the discerning, all of them are right. Whoa. So could it be, it's not that God is not speaking. Could it be, it's not God, it's not blessing. Is anybody here, you're good at catch, you can catch things? Anybody good at catch? Come here, if you're good at catching, just, I need two people, come here. I was like, I'm not that good. <laughs> all you're going to do is catch a water bottle, that's it. Just two people. Don't take all day now, people watching online, y'all come on, come on, it don't matter. We got two. Good. Y'all clap it up for our two volunteers. The rest of y'all, can I get y'all to say, y'all scared? <laughs> so look, I want you to see something. So Gabe, I'm going to make you catch. Come stand right here where everybody can see. All right? So God has a blessing. He trying to give Gabe. You caught it. Y'all clap it up. He caught that blessing. Right? God has another blessing he want to give you. You caught that too. All right? Now, remember, God gives us the overflow, so he's giving you more. And he's giving you more. All right? And he's giving you more. He's giving you more. And more. And more. Uh-oh. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. 
Wait, wait a second, bro. God's trying to bless you. Why are you dropping your blessings? <laughs> look at you dropping more blessings. This is how a lot of us look with our blessings. We don't give it. God is trying to give you something. I want you to do something. Give it to her. Now you just throw it out in the crowd. Now keep giving it to her. And keep throwing it out in the crowd. Keep giving it to her. Now pay attention to me because I have a blessing for you. Pay attention to me. Give it. Give it away. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Are y'all seeing this? A lot of us, listen, y'all go ahead and have y'all seats. See, that's all you have to do. Why y'all scared? That's all you have to do. Just catch some water bottles. Look, while a lot of us are saying, God not speaking to me, it's because you're hoarding. I got a raise. <laughs> I got a stimmy. <laughs> this is my new house. This is my new thing. And so God says, listen, for the measure you use, for that same measure, it'll be given unto you. This is why I'm so glad we have the doors open again in the church because we need community. And when I started to share with you, I struggled with that too. Hey, bro, I dealt with that too. Hey, you did? Yeah, I struggled with it too. I thought I was the only one dealing with porn. No, I struggled with it. I struggled with it. I struggled with it. As long as we're all honest, then God can continue to give. A lot of us, the reason you feel like nothing is happening is because you're hoarding everything. You're hoarding 2019 blessings when God already has a 22 breakthrough for you. But... Let me go ahead and give y'all points. So how do we discern the cautionings of God? Point number one, counsel. Counsel. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. It says, where there is no, y'all shout the word, counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So one of the ways God gives us and the Holy Spirit gives us a caution is through counsel. Now, if there is safety in counsel, there must be danger with no counsel. Okay? So listen, you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. All right? When you have counsel, you get A, you get B, you get C, you get D. This is why some people always think they're right, because the only option you have is A. so good counsel gives you multiple choice all you know how is a how to respond to trauma but when I get some counsel B you can respond out of patience C you don't have to respond to that at all D you could just walk away E you could deactivate your whole account it gives you options somebody say options number two God gives cautions through repetition repetition a lot of times we are mislabeling our disobedience as God's silence. Did y'all hear what I just said? We're mislabeling our disobedience as God's silence. It's not that God is not talking. It's that we're looking for a next word when we have no now obedience. I'm going to show you this. And I don't know why it took this week for me to catch this. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now, we know the whole story that happened. He got swallowed up by a big fish. He's in the belly of this fish. He's praying. He has all this whale acid on him. Then the whale throws him up. Now, look at this. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. Didn't God just say the same thing? God gives no new instructions until we have now obedience. That's for somebody. We're expecting God to say something new. He tell you the same thing. Get up at six and pray. And you've been hearing it. For somebody, that's confirmation. You've been hearing it. Get up and pray. Somebody else, he told you, unsubscribe from Netflix. It takes too much of your time. And you've been hearing it. You've been hearing it. Man, God, I need to know, is this your will? Unsubscribe from Netflix. God, I just seem like I don't have enough time. Unsubscribe from Netflix, though. <laughs> it's not permanent. It's just a now instruction. Whatever it is, stop eating out. You feel it every time you swipe your card. Somebody just grab the head like, no, he just said my thing. <laughs> stop eating out. You keep saying I don't have no money, you'll be surprised how much you eat. 
So you could be fit and all. Stop eating out. Listen, he's not going to give you a next word until you have now obedience. Somebody say repetition. Number three, I'm going to deal with this in the Kingdom Vibes Only series. The message is going to be entitled, It Was All a Dream. Number three, how God gives us cautions is in our dreams. In our dreams. That's like seven weeks from now. We're going to do a message called, It Was All a Dream. In our dream. I want to give you Bible to corroborate my claim. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. It says, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a what? In a what? Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Verse 14, somebody say obedience. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night. Y'all See, y'all just read past this around Christmas. Could you imagine how uncomfortable it had to be to travel at night? When he had the dream, I'm thinking he woke up and got obedient immediately. He didn't like, well, we're going to do it at sunrise. <laughs> and me, look, look right in there. At night, they left for Egypt. Now, I don't really have time to bother this. How did he know that wasn't just something he ate? How did he know in the dream that was God? Anybody had a dream that you still remember to this day? How do you know that was God? It's because Joseph knew his purpose. So powerful, y'all. He knew, I have to protect Mary, and I have to protect this child. At first, I was going to dismiss her. You have a girlfriend. She come to you and tell you she pregnant. And you say, who the daddy? And she say, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> have your girl tell you that. I'm pregnant. It's Jesus, though. <laughs> How did he know? He knew because God already gave him a word. Don't put her away. Don't put her away. Don't have sex with her. What she's carrying truly is of the Holy Spirit. So the way I know that dream wasn't just gas is I know my purpose. If I don't know my purpose, I won't know the cautionings in my dream. Last point. We talked about this all in the message. How does God give us a caution? It's uneasiness. Something you can't shake. For me, I've tried it. Can't shake it. You can try to ignore it. You can try to work it out, drink it out, sex it out, smoke it out. But God is so loving that even in your carnal state, he'll keep on saying the same thing. And I tried to get us to understand on tonight that if you're going to have discernment, whenever God gives you that uneasiness, pray. Pray. As David said, in my distress, in my uneasiness, in my uncertainty, I cried to God. Why? Because he's the only one that can calm my soul. And a lot of us have been looking for everything else but God to calm your soul relationships, money, more follows, bigger platform, new car, new spouse, new house. You're trying to calm this turbulence in your soul. And I'm here to tell you, the only person that could do it is Jesus. Only person. It's going to interrupt your plans. It's going to cause you to be inconvenienced. But it's better to be inconvenienced by the Holy Spirit than inconvenienced because you're paying the penalty. So God on a night... This one probably was tough. To hear a word on how do we learn to hear your voice and to obey. So God, I, honestly, what I feel in this moment is there are many people who have heard you speaking to them. We just haven't done it. We've just been procrastinating. Procrastination is based on the assumption that the door will always remain open. Would you forgive us, God, for all the times that you're speaking to us? You gave us an unsettling or something ain't right. And we went on anyway. And I pray that in this moment, this message will never 
be able to be evaporated from our heart so that whatever it is that we face, we can say it was on this night in July, I heard a word that when I was about to do something, I felt uneasiness, I paused. I may not know if it's you or if it's my anxiety, but God, I'm not gonna keep going, I'm gonna pause to seek your face. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who agrees with that prayer would just say amen.